I was requested today to speak about the most merciful incarnation of the Lord, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, who came to give the highest happiness in the most simple way. Actually, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is not an incarnation. He's not avatar. He's avatari. He's a source of all incarnations. He is Krishna himself. And uh, he came because Krishna was thinking. As most of you know, the Lord appeared here in this world 5,000 years ago. And he taught Bhagavad Gita and taught about worship to himself in the mood of opulence. He established the Varnashram system of uh, working according to our uh, social ashram and occupation for the pleasure of the Lord. And uh, he gave many, many purificatory activities. But then, after he went back to his own abode 5,000 years ago, he was thinking that actually, I spent 125 years on the earth, but I didn't really give what I wanted to give to the world's population. I wanted to give a certain kind of love that would even astound me and make me faint. I gave rules and regulations, I gave worship and opulence, but that kind of worship does not overwhelm me, nor does it give the living entity the highest happiness. So I want to come and give that. So he came then 500 years ago as Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, and as the uh, Mahavadanya, as the most merciful incarnation, he gave uh, association with the original, complete form of the Lord that gives the highest happiness. Now, you may say that, okay, the original complete form of the Lord is Krishna and Vishnu, but it gets more specific than that. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu left so many instructions and these instructions are called Gauravani. The main Gauravani was expressed by another one of our acharyas following Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, who said this verse, Aradyo Bhagavan Brajeshatanayas Taddama Brindavanam Ramyad Karchirupasanam Brajabadu Bargena Jakopita Srimad Bhagavatam Purana Mamalam Prema Pumarto Mahan Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu Matamidam Tatradaro Naparam That is, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came and said that the uh, Aradyo, my supreme worshipable object, Bhagavan, Arajo Bhagavan, the most worshipable object, Brajesha Tanayas, is not Lakshmi Pati Narayan, not even Dwarkadish, who married 16,000 queens and lives simultaneously with them in 16,000 palaces, but it's Brajesha Tanaya, the son of Nanda Maharaj, who who, as a baby, in the arms of Mother Yasoda, cried, ka, ka, ka. Gurudev was imitating the cry of a baby. And who loves to be defeated by his cowherd friends, like Sridham and Subal. And if they would have a wrestling match, then Sridham would win because he's sitting on the chest of Krishna, and he says to Krishna, I won. And Krishna said, no, I won. He said, how did you win? He said, because my nose is up and your nose is down. So that Krishna who gave so much pleasure to Mother Yasoda, 
who gave so much pleasure to his coward boyfriends, who, though he had to, or Subal had to work a little bit, or Sridam had to work a little bit in defeating Krishna, although that gave Krishna the highest happiness to be defeated by his friend, when Srimati Radhika put on her wrestling outfit and simply stood before Krishna ready to fight, wrestle, immediately Krishna fainted upon looking at her. So he's completely controlled by the love of the gopis. That Krishna, when Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was at the Ratayatra festival, he added a new light to that festival. One of his verses was that I'm not a brahmana, teaching us how we must think if we want the ultimate happiness and the ultimate connection with the ultimate feature of the Lord. I'm not a brahmana, I'm not a vaisha, I'm not a sudra, I'm not a grihastha householder, I'm not a renunciate. What am I? I am the servant of the servant of the servant of Gopi Bhartu, which um, generally means he who is the husband of the gopis. But etymologically, there's a deeper meaning than that. It doesn't mean ultimately that he is the husband of the gopis or that he is the lord of the gopis. Bhartara also means lord. And it doesn't even only mean that he's the beloved of the gopis. Even more deeply, it means that he whose lord is the gopis. So when Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said that Arajo Bhagavan, the supreme worshipable deity, is Krishna, which Krishna? Not any Krishna, but Krishna who's the son of Mother Yasoda, not Krishna who is subordinated by Rukmini and Satyabhama and his other queens, but Krishna who is subordinate to the love of the gopis. There's so many very beautiful uh, stories that Srila Gurudev tells to show if we want the highest ultimate happiness, which is actually not even achievable by Brahma, the first created being, who, under Krishna's direction, created all the universes just by a mere change of his mentality. He has so much power. And which is not achieved by even Lakshmi Devi, the goddess of fortune. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is giving that topmost highest happiness of being connected with that Brajendra Nandan Shamsundar. So he told so many stories. In fact, in one, uh, one very, very beautiful book for achieving that highest happiness, which is called Sri Manashiksha by Srila Raghunath Das Goswami, uh, Srila Gurudev translates that Srila Raghunath Das Goswami is uh, instructing his mind. O oh mind, don't, um, don't engage in mundane talks which steals away the treasure of my intelligence. Don't also engage in talks of impersonal liberation which uh, devours my very self. And oh mind, don't even engage in the worship of Lakshmi Pati Narayan, which leads to Vaikuntha. There's a great uh, wall between us and our worshipful Lord when we think of him as our worshipful Lord and we as his tiny insignificant servant. We must begin there, otherwise we'll take his intimate pastimes cheaply. But that's only the beginning. So 
um, I must know at the beginning that he breathes in, out, in and out innumerable universes by a mere portion of a portion of a portion of a portion of a portion, five times removed portion of himself as Mahavishnu and as Garbhadakshai Vishnu, Lord Brahma comes from his navel, which is shaped like a lotus flower, and Brahma creates the rest of the universe. It's not enough to know him as the super soul, who's directing the wanderings of all living entities, and who gives the results of everyone's activities, either sinful or pious. Raghunath Das Goswami is praying don't worship that Lakshmi Pati Narayan. What to do, O mind? Always engage in Prachura Pracharya Tam, 24 hour service of Sri Sri Radha and Krishna in the land of Braj, who give the special gift of their rati or attachment to them. There is one a history of Lakshmi Devi that Srila Gurudev tells to show her glory, because why do we have so many glories of so many, why not just read about the intimate, amorous pastimes of Radha and Krishna? Because we'll think that they are ordinary. Therefore, we cultivate a knowledge of the Lord's other incarnations first just so that we can say, and Krishna is higher than that, and Krishna includes that. We hear about the glories of his consorts, like Satyabhama and Lakshmi, just so that we can understand that Srimati Radhika, her love is much higher than that. Otherwise, how can we understand? Unless we hear about Sita and Ram, and then to understand that Radha and Krishna is higher than that, how can we understand? Even atheists weep when they watch the Ramayan. They put garlands on their TV sets. Because unless we understand the, that Sita is an uh, expansion of Srimati Radhika, and all the greatness of Sita is there in Srimati Radhika, plus millions of times over, when we hear that Radha and Krishna leave each other in the very early morning hours in the forest, and they both stealthily go to their own individual homes. And as soon as Srimati Radhika leaves the association of Krishna, immediately she feels that every moment being away from Krishna is like a yuga and she can't even remain conscious. She faints in the agony, which is actually the ecstasy of separation. So unless we understand and read about and glorify all their expansions, then we can't understand them. But at the same time, we know that our goal is to fully be absorbed in them. Just like Dronacharya was going to teach archery, or he was in the middle of teaching archery to the Pandavas. And he said, okay, who wants to volunteer to shoot this wooden bird that's on the branch, but not the wooden bird, the uh, eye of the wooden bird, well, not the eye of the wooden bird, the pupil of the eye of the wooden bird. So Duryodhana, who was very puffed up by his false sense of prestige, he said, oh, yes, I'll do it. So Duryodhana, not Duryodhana, Dronacharya, their archery teacher, said, okay, do you see the pupil of the eye? Sure. Do you see the eye? Of course I see the eye. Do you see the bird? Yes, I see the bird. Do you see the branch? Yes, I see the branch. Do you see all of us? Yes, I see all of us. Then sit down. You'll never make it. And each, each of the Pandavas saw less and less. Finally, when he came to Arjun, Arjun said, I only see the pupil. I don't see the eye, what to speak of the bird. And so Dronacharya said, yes, you'll make the mark. So ultimately, we want to become one-pointed. 
Yet we want to hear about the other's glories so we know the value of the ultimate goal, which is the only ultimate happiness of the fortunate living entity. So Srila Gurudev told the story of Lakshmi. I think most of you know the history of uh, Vamandev, the incarnation of the Lord who took the form of a dwarf Brahmana. And by his three steps, he covered the entire earth planet, the entire universe, put his uh, foot through the coverings of the universe, and then the causal ocean came down through, the, through that covering and became the Ganges. And then he put his third foot on the head of Bali Maharaj, uh, indicating, as Bali Maharaj said, okay, the, you've got all my possessions now, you've covered the whole universe, but the possessor of the possessions is worth more than the possessions. So I still have my head left over. So you can put your third step there. So then uh, Vamandev asked Bali Maharaj, say, okay, I'm going to send you down to the lower planetary systems, but I'll give you any boon. So Bali Maharaj said, I want the boon that I have about 50 gates in my palace there in Sutal. I want you to stand as my uh, gatekeeper in front of every one of those 50 gates, 50 doors, so that I can see you all the time and I won't ever feel your separation. So Vamandev agreed. In his Vishnu form, he stayed with Bali Maharaj. So meanwhile, back in Vaikuntha, Lakshmi Devi is getting very upset. Where is my husband? He was supposed to return long ago. So as she was lamenting, Narada came and said, what's the matter? She said, well, my husband's been gone for so long. He went to um, Bali Maharaj to cheat him. And I don't know, maybe he's been cheated by Bali Maharaj. So Narada whispered something in her ear. And then she took the form of a old but very beautiful Brahmani lady. And she went to the palace of Bali Maharaj in Sutta Lok, just exactly on the day, every once in a while he would give in charity to all of his, all the people who wanted charity in his kingdom. So she sat there at the end of the bench and everybody else was greedily saying, please give me this, give me that, I want this, I'm in this distress. And she just sat there very quietly. And then when everybody was gone, he was overwhelmed by something about her that he didn't know what. So he got off of her, his throne and bowed down at her feet and said, Oh, mother, uh, you're sitting here. I know you must be wanting something, but I don't know what it is. Can you please tell me? She didn't say anything. She just kept looking down. And then finally, after he insisted and insisted, she said, Well... I don't believe that you'll really give it to me. He said, I will, I promise. She said, you promise? You really promise? No matter what it is, you'll give it to me? Yes, I promise. I don't believe it. I really do promise. So then she said, okay. So at that time, when he said, I promise three times, he remembered, didn't I do this before? When Vamandev came, I had to take a vow uh, th in three ways that I would give him whatever he asked for. And now it's happening again. So he smiled and kind of had the feeling she might be Lakshmi. So she said, he said, I promise, tell me what you want. And she just indicated him. I want my husband back. So at first, Bali Maharaj was not happy, but then he said, okay, I'll give you the original back and I will keep the expansions. So Lakshmi took her husband back to Vaikuntha. Higher than that, much, much higher than that, is Krishna in Dwarka, where he lives simultaneously in 16,000 palaces with his 16,000 queens. And one day, 
Narada again came and said, Krishna was surrounded by his queens, and Narada said, here is a Parijata flower. So right now, in front of me, I want you to give this flower to the queen who you love the most. So Krishna was thinking, oh, now I'm in trouble. As we know, all problems of life are solved just by remembering the Lord. So how is it that the Lord can have any trouble? In Vaikuntha, he is the God of gods, the source of innumerable universes and incarnations. In Dwarka, the, uh, his associates and his devotees know him as God and as not God. So even though it appears that they have less knowledge, they actually have more knowledge of who the Lord really is and more devotion and higher happiness. So Krishna thought, I'm in trouble, I'm in dilemma. But he thought, well, if I give this Parijata flower to my Patarani, my first queen, Rukmini, then probably nobody else will mind too much because they know she's the first queen. But as soon as he did that, Satyabhama, who's his most fortunate queen, because she acts with him most, more than any of his other queens, closest to how he was treated by the gopis. So she immediately ran off to the anger room, took off her queen's dress, and put on old worn and torn clothing, and lie down on the ground. And then Krishna came to her, and he touched her feet, and she pushed, pushed him away, pushed his hand away. And he said, you're not so intelligent, because I've given you all of my love, and I've given Rukmini one ordinary flower. Do you want an ordinary flower, or do you want my love? And she was so angry and weeping uncontrollably. She said, you can't even giving me, give me an ordinary flower, what to speak of, your love. I want to leave this palace. I want to go back home to my father, and I never want to live with you again. So Gurudev said, Krishna is so clever that he pacified her in many ways. And he said to her, what to speak of a flower, I'll get you a whole tree. Come with me. And he immediately called for Garuda, his bird carrier, who came in a moment and immediately took Satyabhama and Krishna to the heavenly planets. And he uprooted a whole Parijata tree, at which time Indra became very angry. And with his armies, Indra attacked Krishna. Krishna defeated Indra and brought that Parijata tree back to Dwarka and told Satyabhama, now Satyabhama, just to prove you're my favorite queen, I want you to have a big festival and plant this tree in your garden and hold a big festival, invite all the queens so that they can see. So Satyabhama very happily uh, had the festival and all the queens came, including Rukmini. Srila Gurudev said that if Rukmini had held the festival, Satyabhama would not have come in indignation. But Rukmini is so liberal that she came and so tolerant that she came and took part in the festivities. So when, another time, when Rukmini was, uh, she was sitting with Krishna in his palace and Krishna told her, you know, I think you made a mistake by marrying me. You're very uh, wealthy, and you're the daughter of a king. So many princes wanted to marry you. You could have had anybody, Sisupal or anybody. But me, nobody even knows who my real parents are. Only poor people worship me. So maybe it's better if you think of some other husband that you'd rather marry, and I will personally take you there. So Rukmini was very submissive. And so instead of joking back with him, not taking what he said as a joke, 
she immediately fainted. She was uh, fanning him with a chamara, but she immediately fainted. And he picked her up and brought her back to consciousness. And he said to her, and then she started glorifying him. But he said to her, if I knew that you were going to faint, I wouldn't, if I knew that you were so disqualified, I wouldn't have joked with you. Why disqualified? Because if he's joking with the gopis, he would never, sometimes when Satyabhama would be angry, Krishna would say, okay, then leave my palace. And then she would immediately become afraid. But Srimati Radhika and the gopis, they send Krishna away. Get out of my kunj. I don't want to have any relationship with you. Even when Krishna falls at her feet, she can send him away. There was one time uh, she was making a garland, but she was in man. She was in transcendental loving anger. She was making a garland, and she was in man because man means that I know that Krishna will be under my control. So Krishna came over, and he was thinking, if she would just look at me, I bet her man would go away if she looks at my beautiful form. So he's standing there, staring at her, and she's just completely absorbed in her garland, pretending that she doesn't see him. Even Lalita came over, her most intimate Saki came over and said, Radhika, Krishna's standing right here and you're ignoring him? Give up your man. And she just would not even pay any attention to Lalita. So Krishna was standing there for 15 minutes, 20 minutes, a half hour, just waiting and getting completely agitated. And then Radharani started smiling in order to cover up the smiling so that Krishna wouldn't realize that she knew he was there. Uh, she started playing with her nose ring, her earring rather, and covering up her mouth at the same time. So this is uh, millions of times more control over Krishna. Radhika is known as Sobhagyavati, meaning that she has full control over Krishna. Once she was telling one of her sakis that Krishna does not know what to do around me. He loves me so much that he wishes that I was camphor so that he could put me all over his body. He wishes that I was a garland so, or a necklace so that he can take me and put me around his neck and keep me there. Some try, sometimes he uh, pulls at me. Why? Not out of lust, but because he wants to come inside me because he can't tolerate a moment of separation, being separated from me to any extent. And sometimes they would be on a swing together, a swing where they would face each other. And as the swing would go higher and they would look at each other and tears would come from their eyes and their tears would block their tears of happiness, and then the tears would uh, block their eyes from seeing, and then they would feel overwhelmed with separation from each other, that every moment was like 12 years or more. So uh, these are the most intimate pastimes of the Lord, where he's in his complete feature. Krishna is, or God is, complete in Dwarka, He's more complete in Mathura, and he's most complete in Vrindavan. But even in Vrindavan, Krishna's original form is as uh, Kishore, as an eternal teenage youth. And all of his other ages, like his Poganda age of 10 years old, where he plays with his coward boyfriends, that form is an expansion of his original form as Krishna. And his baby form as Bal Gopal is also an expansion 
of that original form. And all the other forms, Dwarkadish, Krishna, um, Narayan, Mathura Krishna, Baby Krishna, all those forms are, with all, are all within that form that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is teaching everyone to worship. Not only teaching everyone to worship, but also giving a very, very simple process. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu himself would sing very beautiful songs to this Prajendra Nandan Shamasundar. And he came to give the chanting of the Hare Krishna mantra with the addition of this Braj Prem. He gave the uh, mala of Hari Nam with the addition of Braj Prem. So he himself was so uh, absorbed in the ecstasies. He's Krishna himself who was so overwhelmed by the love of Srimati Radhika, thinking when I'm with her, I never know when to stand up, sit down, what to do with myself. I'm completely overwhelmed by her. And I also see that she can relish me even more than I do. And I see that her happiness in our loving affairs is 10 million times greater than mine. So he begged her that please let me borrow your mood and your complexion so I can experience what I'm missing as myself. He would try so many ways as, as Krishna to enter into her moods. Like for example, uh, there's two pictures there. One is Prem Samput, where Krishna, the god of gods, with unlimited eagerness to understand Srimati Radhika's moods, he takes the form of a demigoddess, putting on a sari and covering his head and lamenting, but not saying why he's lamenting, coming and visit her. And she said to him, you know, I want to accept you as my sake. There's some irresistible attraction that I have for you. So please tell me whatever your lamentation is, and I will fix that up. So finally, Krishna said, well, I'm a damsel from the heavenly planets. And I heard when Krishna played his flute, and he called all of you gopis. And then I saw how Krishna left all the other gopis for you. But then I saw how Krishna left you, who are the reservoir of all good qualities. And that's unbearable for me. And then she went on, or Krishna went on, to tell all about Krishna's bad qualities. So then Srimati Radhika said, well, actually, I should totally reject you because you criticize my most beloved Krishna. But I don't know why the same kind of attraction I have for him, I have for you. So I still want you to live with me. In fact, I want to tell you about my love locket, about the glory of my love. But there's not enough time if you just come for a visit. I want you to stay with me forever, and then I will reveal my love. Even when Krishna leaves me, during the rasa dance, we are actually one soul in two bodies. And he knows how I'm thinking and I know how he's thinking. But just to enjoy pastimes, sometimes, by, uh, sometimes I forget that I know him, that I know everything about him and why he's leaving me. So then Krishna said, okay, well, if you're actually one soul in two bodies, then if you meditate on him right now, then he would appear to you, right? And Radharani said, yes. So then she started meditating and prayed to Lord Narayan, please don't embarrass me in front of this damsel. Please make it so that Krishna will appear right now. 
And so Krishna, as the damsel, immediately took off his demigod clothes and appeared to her as Krishna. So Krishna goes through all kinds of lengths just to um, experience the moods of Srimati Radhika, which he couldn't as Krishna. So he begged her, please lend me your moods so that I can uh, relish them and experience the perfection of myself. So Radharani said, yes, I will lend them to you, but still I'm going to have to help you out. I will send Lalita, my dear most Saki, and she will help train you as Swarup Damodar. And I will come as, I will send Vishaka, my other most intimate Saki, and she will help you as Ramananda. She will train you as well. He will train you as well. And I will also come as Gadadhar Pandit, and I will train you as well. So when Gadadhar Pandit was the priest at the Totagopinath temple, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, who was Krishna, covered by the moods of Srimati Radhika, would come and hear Srimad Bhagavatam from Gadadhar Pandit. Why? Because then Gadadhar Pandit is speaking Srimad Bhagavatam, the songs of Srimati Radhika and the gopis in Venu Geet, Brahmar Geet, and other Geets, Pranaya Geet, with an explanation and realization of her moods. So Krishna was able to taste what he couldn't taste as Krishna. Even though he's the god of gods, the source of innumerable Narayan forms, the source of Dwarkadish and Mataresh, what to speak of the source of innumerable universes and unlimited demigods. And when one worships the demigods, Krishna himself says that I give the worshiper the fruit of their worship to the demigods. But even so, Krishna is feeling himself incomplete. So his completeness comes as Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came to taste something, and he also came to give something. And the thing that he came to give, the donation that he came to give, is anarpita chiring charat kurunayavatir nam kalo. He came to give what no other incarnation could possibly give, and what no other acharya before him could possibly give. They gave all the other worship, but he gave, came to give the maid service of Srimati Radhika, which would make Krishna himself the most indebted to that devotee. Nobody pleases Krishna like the maidservants of Srimati Radhika. In fact, generally we pray, when will I become so purified that I always have my head at your lotus feet? So we learn from our acharyas, like Srila Rupa Goswami, Srila Raghunath Das Goswami, Srila Naratam Das Taki, Thakur, who all come from that region to teach us how to pray in such a way that we can experience that highest happiness. Srila Rupa Goswami prayed in Utkalika Balari, when will I, as a chokidar at your kunj, not allow Krishna to come into the kunj to beg pardon from you unless he would first fall at my feet. This, uh, this status of devotion is unimaginable. One of the first things that I ever heard from Srila Prabhupada back in 1966 at his first temple of 26 Second Avenue is that we know about Lord Jesus, who was so merciful, who pretended to die for our sins, but he only gave the position of God is the Father. And what do we do with our Father? Oh, Father, give me this, give me that. But when Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came, he taught that you can become the Father of God and do real service. And higher than that, 
he came to teach that you are, you can be Krishna's beloved, and in this way experience the permanent highest happiness. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came to give this uh, system of chanting Hare Krishna and studying all the books by our acharyas who are none other than those same maidservants of Srimati Radhika in Goloka Vrindavan who came here and taught by their examples what to sing, how to pray, and also left us their books to read and understand the siddhanta of all these levels of truths. What is maya tattva? What is this illusory material world? What is jiva tattva? Who I am I? Where did I come from? How can I go there to my destination? Guru tattva? Who is the bona fide guru and what are his qualifications? How to sh take shelter of him? So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu uh, was so much absorbed in his ecstasies of being Srimati Radhika, such ecstasies that sometimes he would become a tortoise and all of his limbs would come within his um, body. Or sometimes in his ecstasies, in his ecstasies, his limbs would be separated by eight inches. So he was so much absorbed in those ecstasies that he couldn't teach as much so all of his manjaris from Goloka Vrindavan came and left all of these books. So we're so very fortunate to have them. I'll ask if there's any questions or comments. <laughs>